world and the origin of suffering, we have to understand that there's a way to let suffering go. Suffering never stops. I have a friend whose husband passed away. He was sickly, but no one expected him to pass. She went home for lunch one day, and he was dead. It was at the end of the spring semester. She took the last couple of weeks off. Someone filled in for her. The summer, I didn't see her, came back in the fall. I went into her office. I said, how are you doing? And she just burst into tears. She says, I just can't get over grieving. And I said, well, you're not supposed to get over grieving. Grieving is like an ocean. It comes in, and then it goes out. The wave comes in, and it comes out. Some waves are more powerful than the others. Some are less powerful than others. That's the ebb and flow of life. And you can deal with grieving by understanding that's the nature of grieving. You can understand with suffering by understanding that's the nature of suffering, according to the Buddha. But you can't hold on to it. Some people are depressed. My life never seems to go right. Well, life never goes all wrong for someone all the time. The Buddha says there's a way to deal with it. So the second phase of my recovery, I was going through radiation. They blew out, I think I've told you, they blew out two saliva glands. You get three major glands. They blew out these two. So I'm dry all the time. Yesterday in class, I forgot to bring my liquid in. Someone had to go to the office and get it. I get really dry, and I wouldn't be able to talk. And I remember I would go down, uh, the, the University of Michigan was 240 miles away, so they had a house for men doing radiation, a house for lady. I was in the house for the men. And it was about three or four weeks in, one of the residents who was living at the house, resident is a doctor who's in more training until they're ready to go out and get their full job. And he comes into the house one day and he says, Mr. Puller, you're the talk of the whole oncology department. Oncology is a big word for cancer and it happened to be the radiation department. And I said, what am I doing wrong? And he said, nothing. He says, you show up for radiation and you joke all the time. By now, he said, without the saliva glands, you should have cake white saliva all over your face. And I remember looking at him saying, well, I thought I came here to get better, not to get worse. And he said, that's what we're talking about. You show up and everybody else is hurting. And I'm sure you're hurting, but you show up and you just don't joke about it because I was hurting. You don't lose 54 pounds in seven and a half weeks because you can't eat literally. Your whole, you know what a canker sore is, right? Your whole mouth is one canker, even water burnt going down. But the Buddha would say, okay, so you're suffering. How are you going to deal with suffering? The Buddha says the learned experience to deal with suffering is will either let us elevate ourselves beyond the suffering or will crush us under the weight of suffering. So a friend of mine is 34. His wife is 32. She died suddenly. No one expected it. It took a couple of months for me to run into him again. I said, how are you doing anyway? He said, every day I go home, I walk into her closet, and I just hug her clothes, and I smell her. He says, but then I have to leave the closet and go on. I have to live life. But periodically, he'll go in the closet, and he'll hug her clothes, and he'll smell her. The Buddha says, how do you deal with suffering? There's a way to deal with suffering, and it's not to hang on to it. It's to let it go, but it comes back. You ever see the movie The Judge with Robert Downing? And uh, ah, he was in the open range, I forget it. Duval, Richard Duval or Robert Duval. It's a great movie. It reminds me of my dad and I. I was the black sheep in the family. Nothing I could do would satisfy that man. He didn't hate me, he just didn't like me. And then my mom passed, and he asked if I'd come down here and take care of him. Literally move. I moved away from a $100,000 a year job up in northern Michigan to come down here and live with him. And I thought, this ought to be interesting. It was the best five years I ever had with him. All that suffering kind of went in the background. See, he needed me now. And what I found out is I needed him. It's how forgiveness and you let things go and you repair the damage. And suddenly you find out things are not only tolerable, maybe they're even worthwhile. And the Buddha says the way we do that is learning to let go of suffering. We can't avoid it. It happens. I'm glad it's been, what, 13 years since the last episode with me. I'm not looking forward to number 11, but I wouldn't mind if I avoided it. And when I bring it up, it's to highlight that things happen to us, and then there's a way to just let it go. And that's what the Buddha calls the Noble Eightfold Path that we'll get to in a minute. So someone tell me, what does Buddha say about suffering? Well, first of all, does anyone identify with suffering? You're old enough to identify with suffering. Does anyone identify with suffering? I don't need details. 
I do all the detail work. No one identifies with suffering. This is alone. Thank you, thank you. One at least is honest. I'm not going to ask you and pigeonhole you unless you want to share it, but only one identifies with suffering. Didn't you hurt yourself in sports? Does that hurt? Is that suffering? My granddaughter last year, third in the country in volleyball. She's at Northwestern. She's now finding out that other people are as good or better than she is. She had to go in for hip surgery. It's supposed to be three hours. It turned into eight. She's in a whole hip cast, a plastic cast that you put on. She's on crutches in Northwestern, which is just outside of Chicago. She's fallen down three times on the ice now and tripped once on the steps. I said to her, you need to get over it, girl. You're going to heal. It's going to hurt like hell, and then it's going to heal. And you're going to look back at this. Of course, eight weeks from now, she's going to have this hip done. If you learn the lesson now, eight weeks from now, you'll be better off, because they're both going to hurt like hell. But you're going to get over it. You're going to get back on the court. She's number one striker. Do I have volleyball people in here? Number one striker. As a freshman, no one starts as a freshman. And for now, you're going to hurt like hell, girl. Get over it. Learn something from it. So when I got out of the military, I went to work in this county jail, and there's a gentleman there named Fred Lowe, an Olympic weightlifter. Best show ever, seventh in the world. I can't imagine seventh in anything. Seventh in the world, Olympic weightlifter. You know, one of these short, stocky people. He comes in one day and he's limping. I said, what'd you do, Fred? And he says, he says, I blew out my hammy when I was, ex I said, I guess no more exercise. I said, oh, no, 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 no. He says, you treat the body with respect, but you show it how to heal. And he was in pain. And he went on to the next Olympic trials they had. And he qualified and he went to the worlds. He didn't ever get as good as seven. Buddha says that through suffering, he learned that there's a way to let go of it. You cannot avoid it, but there's a way to let go of it. And the way to let go, to it, go of it is your attitude towards life and especially the suffering that you experience. Once you make the internal adjustment, suffering doesn't go away. We deal with it much differently. <clears throat> so the last time I had to go in for a CT scan, do you know what CT scans are? They put you in the box and they do 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 and to do it, they wanted what they call contrast, because they had to see what was going on in here. So they give you a dye. Well, I'd had four before this. No problem. Went in for the fifth time. They gave me the dye, and they put me in the tube, and they're having problems with the program. And while I'm in there, it's getting a little warm. And I say to the kid, I said, you know, it's getting a little warm in here. So he pulls me out of the tube, and he goes over, and he's doing some things on his machine. And suddenly, I start to sweat. And my body's doing this without my permission. And he turns around and he sees this. And he calls a, a nurse and he calls two doctors. I have no idea what they injected me with. But suddenly, everything stopped. And the doctors went away and the nurse was still there. And I said, what the heck just happened to me? He says, oh, he says, you had a reaction to the dye. He says, You're do I have nursing people here? He said, your PP went down to 60 over 30. I thought, 60 over 30, what does that mean? He says, well, you were right at the edge. Now, those are real narrow tables they put you on. I said, well, I know I'm right at the edge. I said, what does that mean? And he yeah. says, well, we lose them sometimes. You almost flatline. I said, you mean like dying? He says, yeah. He says, you almost went right off the edge. We almost lost you. And I thought, now this, this is an example of what the Buddha says. I mean, that was really freaky, people. When your body starts moving without your permission, it's like, OK. In fact, what really happened is I thought all my, you know what orifices are, their openings in your body? I thought they were all going to vacate whatever was there. And I remember he said, yeah, you were right on the edge. We almost lost you. And I thought, that's interesting. I came in for a CAT scan. You guys almost killed me. Ar, 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 ar. I mean, look, it happened, and it was unavoidable. And now we had the residue. How do you deal with that? That's what the Buddha's talking about. There is a way to let go. You can't avoid suffering. There's a way to let go. How do you let go? He says it's through what he calls the Noble Eightfold Path. Any questions about suffering? There's an origin, cessation, how we stop it. We have to let go of our attachments to it. Everybody with me on that? Do you know anyone who's addicted? Not, not, not person, I'm just anybody who's, you ever see anybody who's addicted recover? They just let go. 
if they do it in a healthy way. They just let go. They never go back. They just let go. And the problem is, this is the problem right here. And you have to find a way to let go. And it comes in a variety of ways. Some have spiritual experiences. Some follow a 12-step program. But it's the letting go. It's the ability to just say, I'm not going to live like that anymore. And it is a process. For many people, it's a process. Whether it's a revelation spiritually or they follow a program, it is a revelation. You have to change the way you do things, your relationship to the suffering. So this is the Eightfold Noble Path. There's note of them, eight of them you'll notice. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you're tested on this, you have to know what these are. And I'll give you a little bit of detail on them. The first two deal with wisdom. Wisdom is about understanding, right understanding and right intention or aspiration means goals in mind. So if you're suffering, what would your goal be? Well, you can't avoid suffering, so it's how do I deal with suffering? In a way where suffering doesn't control me, I get to deal with suffering. The next three deal with moral commitment or ethical conduct, right speech. People literally talk themselves into calamity or they talk themselves out of calamity. We don't understand the power of the tongue. 80% of sickness starts up here in the mind. The medical people will tell you that, oh, it's flu season, I get the flu every season, and then you get the flu. Now, bugs are real, and you might get invaded by bugs, and you might have to deal with the bugs. But medical people will tell you up here is 80% of either not getting sick or dealing with sickness in a way where it doesn't deal with you. When I went through the treatment with cancer, they said right up here, your attitude will probably determine if you survive or not. Now, cancer's real. Bugs are real. But they said your attitude towards this will have a lot to do with your ability to overcome it and to have recovery. Right action. What do we do in the face of suffering? Do you go under? Or do you decide to go over? Suffering, suffering. Did I show you the, 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 the video with uh, 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 Nick Boisic? Did I show you his video in here? Those of you I had for ethics, you remember this gentleman? Hang on. I think this is, this is probably worth doing. Let me, let me go back in here and pick it up. Oh, are you kidding me? Give me a second, people. I didn't anticipate this. You guys didn't steal my password, did you? No, I didn't, I didn't think you did. No. Young Haseo. My name is Nick Vujicic and I love traveling around the world, fishing, golfing, and swimming. I love living life. 